Hello students, hello masters of your own destiny. How is everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for being back here from Suarez Basement. Guys, if you haven't done it yet, please just go to our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, look from Suarez Basement, and subscribe to our channel. Your support means the world to us. This video podcast is especially for you guys, those students in the communication media and the art. So your support is very, very, very important to us. So here's the deal. If you're interested to be working in the future with Stalin, Uh, has a talent producer, has a talent agent to be all around celebrity. Our guest today and our conversation is especially for you. We have Kerry O'Keefe. She is a talent producer for the Wendy Williams Show. She is here with us. We're going to be talking to her about her career, what it told to be a talent producer, what are her responsibility, and many, many other cool and interesting questions that we have for her. So again, thank you for being here. And let's go start our video podcast of today. I'm super happy that you're here with us. Thank you so much for taking the time. And I know sometimes it's, it's hard to find the time to do these things, but I appreciate it and my students appreciate it very much. Yes, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So Gary, before we move forward, of course, with our conversation, the right thing to do and to us is how are you doing? How is your family uh, at home? Thank you. Everyone is good. Um, I'm from a big family in New Jersey, so everyone is in their prospective houses, but everyone is safe and sound and healthy. Thank you for asking. Tell us a little a bit what you do in the Wendy Williams show and what is your responsibility? I know you are the talent producer, but a lot of my students also understand what, the, what exactly that entail. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I'm the talent producer, one of the talent producers at the Wendy Williams show. I've been there about five seasons now. And um, we are responsible for booking the celebrity guests on the show as well as any, um, any experts, like entertainment reporters, journalists. Um, we book cooking segments, um, demos. There anything that's sort of celebrity driven, we will take care of. When do you say booking, that responsibility go beyond just the booking? I mean, do you take care of the celebrity when they arrive to the studio? You are the person who basically are the contact between the show and the celebrity. Yes, absolutely. So the whole process sort of starts with our outreach. So either we're reaching out to publicists, managers, agents, or they're coming to us and pitching their clients for whatever project they're promoting. Um, so it goes both ways. Sometimes we're reaching out to them. Sometimes they're reaching out to us. Um, and then, yeah, so we work with them to schedule sometimes that's the biggest issue is just when we're gonna be able to have them here and then we will go over sometimes some talking points if necessary um and then once we book them um we are then responsible for greeting them when they get to the studio making sure that everything goes smoothly while they're here and that they have a great time and they're comfortable because that's really one of the most important parts is if the guest is happy when they're at your show and they have a good time then They want to come back. They tell their friends. Their publicist is happy. They want to bring their clients back. So That's awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. Right. It, it, a lot of our students ask the question, well, do these people is being paid for being in the show? How, how that part works? Because uh, they get confused with the fact that not sometimes, you know, celebrities just come for free. They want just to be there and to talk or, or to promote a book or, but sometimes when you want to have somebody, maybe that is a bigger name, how mm -hmm. you attract that, that celebrity into the show? Yes. Uh, it's a good question. I think for the most part in all of the projects that I've worked on, which have been primarily talk shows or I worked at MTV briefly, um, So for the most part, everyone that I book is, I mean, it's sometimes there's a small to scale payment because if it's an, a union show, then they're required to be paid by the actor or the actor's unions. But for the most part, they're unpaid um, appearances or at least not a lot of money. We don't pay to play, which means we don't pay our guests to come on our show. So mm -hmm. what they're getting out of it is promotion 
and the ability to um, tap into our audience, um, which is very valuable in itself. So, Of course, of course. That's fantastic. Uh, you mentioned you work in MTV for a little bit. I did. I worked. Oh, and I think you did also, right? I did. I, yeah. I, yeah. I worked briefly at MTV before I started at Wendy in New York. Um, uh -huh. I worked working like celebrity talent um, just for across all their brands. It was, was really fun. Was that something that you always want to be involved in? I mean, from so many aspects of production from a show, I mean, you have from uh, production assistants to directors to you always want to be involved in the booking of, of talent? You know, I love that question because no, I didn't even know my job existed until I was already working in television. Um, so that's why I kind of like to do these things and tell people about the talent world because it's really something that you don't think about until you hear of it. Um, so no, I mean, I love talent now and I was always a huge TV fan growing up. Like I watched, you know, every old sitcom with my mother, like Happy Days and, you know, go the Andy Griffith show, like going way back. So I've always been a huge fan of television and a big talent, like fan of talent and people who are funny and talented. So, um, but my first job out of college was working at Conan O'Brien's show in New York in the accounting department. I was a finance wow. major. So <laughs> yeah, but I, I knew I wanted to work in television and I just was lucky enough to sort of make a connection um, at NBC in the kind of the accounting department. So I started there. Once I did that, which was also a very cool job, um, I sort of you know, got to know people in the talent department and realized that talent is really the center of a show like that. Um, mm. It's, you know, it's, it gives, it brings a lot of energy to a show, a lot of balance, a lot of very, you know, um, variables. And so I, that's when I sort of got interested in that and really realized that that was a career path. That's awesome. And I'm so glad you're talking about that because all the students are watching right now. Um, that is one of the things that we we talk about it is that you need to understand that your path is not going to be always a straight path. It's, it's yeah. almost impossible, especially in a medium like, like TV production and, and the, the industry that we are in is, is not direct path. It never yeah. will be. Uh, so the fact that you're working now in something that you like so much, but you understand that, you know, you have to pay your duties to get there. It is important. Very. That's like such a good lesson. It's whenever we talk to our interns at the show or I talk to anyone who's looking for advice and how to come up in the TV industry, I always tell them that like you cannot follow, you cannot expect to follow anyone else's path. You have to figure out your own. Everyone will have a different experience that will bring you to a new place, but it's all really valuable. What is it about a booking talent or a talent producer characteristic that you think by your own experience they should have uh, you know if we can say okay let's do a class right now uh producer talent 101 these yeah. are the characteristics of a good talent producer what they were be those characteristics um well i think number one is having just an interest and an awareness of almost everything that's going on in the pop culture world. So you really have to be tuned in to television, movies, books, sports, um, pop culture, music, you know, you get ideas and inspiration from everywhere. And I think if you have really like an interest in that, then it makes it all easier. Um, but you, you, like, you can get ideas everywhere. So you just have to be tuned in, you have to be um, current and up on everything. Um, and then I think also, which is really important in my, in my, um, career and in talent specifically is relationships. That is really the number one thing that I've learned throughout all of this is not only relationships with publicists or managers that you're working with to book the talent, but mm relationships with other other bookers and other producers and just kind of keeping all of those people in your Rolodex, so to speak, because everyone can be helpful to you um, in, in every way. Right. Um, yeah. So tell me a little bit, of course, I mean, you deal with celebrities, you deal with guests that come to the show. It's a typical question that I couldn't resist to ask. 
which one was your crush or like, oh my God, I can't believe I want to meet this person or yeah, give us a little bit of the inside the scoop of, 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 you know, it could be quite excited yeah. to meet people that you want to meet. Well, I don't want to give too much away. It's my, the, the secrets of the trade, but um, I always found that the bigger the celebrity, the nicer they were. So like Tom Hanks is just a wonderful man. He's so kind, so genuine. Um, Jennifer Aniston was always so lovely and gracious. Adam Sandler is like one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Um, and I think that's cool for people to hear, like, you know, s these huge celebrities, they are pretty normal sometimes and just lovely. And that's, that's been a really nice part of, I mean, you know, I, I haven't encountered really too many people that I have bad stories about. So that's really nice. Well, that's good. That's good. And yeah. if, if you have, you're not allowed to tell anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you can say, well, yeah, I don't know about this person. But yeah, the thing is, and, and the other thing that we're talking the other day, which is very interesting, is that this new system, this new way we're producing things, is also allowing celebrity to feel a little more real more casual like you know i'm yeah. watching the cooking shows in food network and they're doing all these you know from the home and and it's mm -hmm. so cool to see the kids and the husband is helping and and they made mistakes and of course they cannot have the process of editing or cut right. and and it's actually really cool it, it does make this celebrity status feel a little more normal and more like Else, let's put it that way yeah absolutely and I, I do think that's cool I mean celebrity has gotten to such a crazy level where everyone's you know everyone idolizes them and puts them on such a pedestal so this is a cool way to kind of equalize everyone you see everyone's just staying home everyone's doing the same thing really and it's it's cool it's also nice to kind of like peep into these people's houses a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is true that, yeah Let's yeah. see. So kind of to, to, to wrap it up, um, for the students that are out there, what is your, you know, it's, it's typical that, that you ask the question, well, what is the recommendations? What would be your advice to the students that are close to graduation to be able to break it through? Uh, what, 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 through your own experience, what would be that advice? My advice is sort of what I hinted at before in terms of relationships. I always say reach out to everyone you know and everyone you think that might help you be able to help you because you never know uh, who who hears of something along the way and will remember you. Don't be afraid to follow up. Um, and I'll also say just in general, like you have to be your own advocate. You have to be your own best, you know, motivator because no one is going to find you a job. You know, you have to put in the work, you have to make the contacts, you have to follow up and you also have to, you know, let your, your wishes and your wants be heard because if you don't actually tell people what you're looking for, they're not going to know. So, um, yeah, you know, talk to everyone, you know, and don't be afraid to reach out. I mean, even, you know, alumni, just find them on LinkedIn. I've had a lot of people reach out to me that way. Um, just use whatever's at your disposal. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. I appreciate your company so much today. I really, really do. This is your house anytime, please. Uh, uh, we're here to help each other. Thank and, you. Uh, I appreciate the conversation and, and uh, thank you so much for your time. You're very welcome. This is great. Thank you so much for what you're doing. It's wonderful. <laughs>